Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is WolfWorld63, and today we'll be taking a look at um, another ship in history that, um, well, wasn't exactly built by the nation that um, commanded it for its for its main service, but it showed a massive impact to what would become some of the most modern and um, advanced um, war vessel or warships around the world. And that is none other than the Japanese um, Congo class battlecruiser, the IJN Congo. Now, um, the Congo does have um, a significant history tied to her. Um, starting from World War One, going all the way to her sinking during World War Two, and we'll be taking a look at that today as well as her design and her lasting legacy that can be seen all around the world. Um, but before we do get into this, um, if you guys are new to the channel or just now jumping onto the channel. Um, I thank you guys for tuning in. Please do go hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you guys do not miss out on any future content. And with that being said, let's hop right on into this. So, the IJN Congo, commissioned in 1913, showcased this a design that combines speed, firepower, and, innov and innovative engineering. The battlecruiser incorporated several cutting-edge design features that contributed to its effectiveness and prominence in naval operations. The Congo featured a sleek hull construction from a high-quality steel, um, emphasizing speed and stability. Its streamlined design with an, an with an elegant bow and a main deck that sloped towards the stern, reduced resistance and allowed for a higher top speed. The vessel's advanced hull design enabled it to achieve impressive speeds, making it one of the fastest capital ships of its time. The battlecruiser's armament was a testament to its offensive capabilities. The Congo was initially armed with eight 14-inch um, guns arranged in a 4x2 um, turret layout, providing formidable firepower to engage enemy vessels and coastal targets. These guns were capable of launching 1,400-pound shells at high velocities and striking targets with accuracy at long ranges. Additionally, the Congo carried numerous secondary armaments, such as an array of 6-inch guns, anti-aircraft guns, and, um, before her modernization, torpedo tubes. These secondary weapons offered effective production or protection against smaller surface threats and aerial attacks. The balance, the, to balance its speed and firepower, the Congo incorporated an armor protection system. Its design included an armored belt along the waterline, averaging around 8 inches in thickness, offering limited protection against enemy fire. The battlecruiser's armored decks, bulkheads, and turrets provided additional defensive capabilities. The Congo, the IJN Congo, distinguished herself throughout her service in various notable engagements, showcasing its capabilities and impact on naval warfare. During World War I, the Congo played a prominent role in the naval battles of the Pacific. It was involved in the Battle of um, Tustitu in 1914, where it bombarded German-held fortifications 
and, pro and proved instrumental in the successful capture of the port. The battlecruiser also participated in other operations, providing cover for Japanese troop movements and patrols. During the interwar period, the Congo underwent significant modernization to enhance its capabilities. Changes included upgrade, upgraded weaponry, improved armor protection, and advancements in fire control systems and propulsion. In World War I, the Congo participated in numerous operations across the Pacific, primarily as a flagship for carrier task forces. It played a critical role, or a crucial role, in the early war operations, um, conducting patrols and providing support for amphibious assaults, as well as engaging enemy surface vessels. The Congo took part in the Battle of Midway and later supported Japanese forces during the Guadalcanal Campaign. Um, this, uh, um, during World War II, she had finally been sunk, um, at, um, I don't, um, I cannot recall the battle at the moment, um, but, um, she had been, um, sunk, and, um, that would actually be the end of the Congo. Now, um, the Algerian Congo's impact during its time in service was significant, both strategically and, um, and symbolically. The Congo's sheer speed and firepower made it a formidable asset and allowed for a range of strategic options. Its ability to accompany carrier task forces ensured air superior superiority and provided vital protection for the Japanese fleet. The battlecruiser's improvement in various operations showcased its dominance over, en over enemy vessels, exerting influence over the Pacific theater. The Congo sim symbolized Japanese naval strength and represented a key component in of the Imperial Japanese Navy's expansion expansionists um, and um, ambitions. Its advanced design and operational capabilities projected power and served as a visible representative as a liberal as a representative as a visible representative of Japan's naval ambitions during the earlier 20th centuries. The Ajahn Congo's legacy endures leaving um, an embedded mark on naval history and naval engineering advancements. The battlecruiser's successful combination of speed, firepower, and innovative design elements influenced subsequent naval developments what lessons learned from the Congo's design and operational capabilities went on to shape future naval vessels and tactics. The, sim the Congo's significant contributions and operational successes established its reputation as a symbol of, a, of Japan's naval um, excellence. Its uh, legacy serves as a reminder of the skill and, do and determination displayed by the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War I, the interwar periods, and also World War II. Though not can though not consigned though now consigned to history, the Ajayan Congo's impact it continues to resonate in various aspects of naval warfare. Inspiration for um the um, the Congo's design continues to inspire naval architects, guiding the development of modern warships. Its balance of speed, firepower, and armor set the stage for subsequent advancements and influenced naval vessel concepts worldwide. As an iconic vessel of the Imperial Japanese Navy, the Congo remains as an um, integral part of naval history, underscoring the importance of naval power in international affairs. In conclusion, the Ajang Congo, as a powerful Japanese battlecruiser, holds a significant place in naval history. Its design features, service history, 
strategic impact, lasting legacy, and continued significance under underscore is unexceptional as its unexceptional um, contributions to maritime warfare. The Congo's fire, the Congo's innovative design, remarkable speed, and potent firepower ensured its prominence among naval forces of its time as a symbol of Japanese naval. F- Naval excellence, the I, the Congo continues to leave a lasting imprint on the on the annals of naval warfare and stands as a testament to the um, in, ingenuity and technological advancements of the Imperial Japanese Navy. So um, that does bring um, our video for today to a close. Um, if you guys are interested in taking, um, in actually taking the ship, um, out into combat, um, you can, e- you can actually find this, um, ship in multiple different games, um, those ga- um, some of those games being, um, War Thunder, World of Warships Legends, and World of Warships Blitz, all of which I would highly recommend for anybody to go play. And if anybody would like to take out the Congo on their own terms, it, those three are definitely highly good ways to go and test the this mighty warship of history out. Um, so, um, again, I thank everybody for, um, and I thank everybody for tuning in. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, please do go hit that subscribe button. Um, ring that notification bell, hit the like button on the video, um, leave a comment down below, tell me if you guys have any questions, concerns, requests, or anything like that, um, if you guys have the same and would just like to contact me through email, you may do so at the email address linked in the description, um, come join the Discord server and the pod, and my podcast over on Spotify, both are linked in the description below. Um, and with that being said, again, I thank everybody for tuning in and I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.